Hi, I'm Cynthia Kahn, founder of Amuse Now, and I'm here today with contemporary or Americana recording artist, J. Thomas Edward. Hey, Thomas. Hi, Cynthia. How are you? Good to talk to you. I'm terrific. How about you? Doing good. Doing good. Congratulations for winning our Music Clout Featured Artist Contest. It was a very, very nice. I'm, I'm, I'm honored. Good, to, good to talk to you. We selected you because we love your music, your edgy sound, and your hit single "Wounded in Love." Tell me more about this song. Um, "Wounded in Love" is the opening track on the album Athens, and it's um. It's a song that's really close to my heart. Um, it's it's really personal. I, I don't um, I don't I don't like talking about the the the, the meanings of it so much because it it doesn't um, it's a love song, but um, it's more of a spiritual song than uh, a normal love song. But that's just for you know for me. It means whatever it means to other people. Um, I think with that song, what was unusual about it was how quickly it came. Um, because I I write, um, or I spend lots of time writing lyrics, and that song just, I mean, it was there. I had it done in like a couple hours, which is not usual for me. So, um, uh, but I'm really, really glad you like it. I love when you just have that energy and it just flows through you. It that goes creative juices. That's terrific. <laughs> yes, it is. It is. <laughs> In addition to Athens, you also have two albums that are coming up under the name Cain and Abel, which is a collaborative project with singer-songwriter Michael O'Keefe. Why don't you tell us a little bit about this project and what you look for when you collaborate with other artists? Well, the, the Cain and Abel um, uh, project, uh, it, it came about um, mostly because I had, I had taken some time off and I hadn't written in a while. And then I went through this um, like marathon writing uh, Time that was like for for months. I was like writing song after song after song, and and it started to like. You know, I started thinking like, you might want to maybe record some of these one day. <laughs> so um, I was thinking about how I was going to do it, and I didn't want to do it the way I had done the previous records, and I want and I wanted to get one person to collaborate with on the arrangements. So. I ended up running into Matthew by by chance, and and we got together and, and started working. And it, what I look for when I'm going to collaborate with someone is that they're not from the same they're not cut from the same cloth that I am. I I like someone that's like from a totally different uh, musical perspective, uh, which can be really frustrating. But you can get um, uh, at least for me, it, it get better results because I, I write songs like kind of in, in, in sketches like a painter before they do a painting they you know do a sketch. That's how I kind of write songs and the arrangements I don't always have a preconceived notion for how they should sound. So um, I really just look for a person that uh, that comes from a different perspective and he definitely does. I mean we're like you know, He's he's from a different planet than I am when it comes to music, but it it really it really worked. I'm really satisfied with the way that those those uh, two records uh, um, uh, came out. So I hope people like them. I, I think we're looking at uh, like the middle of April. They're going to come out. I listened to the songs that you pre-released, and I really like. That's how it goes from the Cain and Abel albums. Can you tell me a little bit more about that song? Um, 
Yeah, that's a, uh, there's definitely a story behind that's just how it goes. I, I originally recorded that song um, on the sessions for my first record, uh, Carnival, uh, but I didn't like the way it came out. I, I, I knew it, it could be better, and I was, I was just frustrated with it, so I, 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 I dropped it and from the record. And then a few years later, I was working on the Athens record, um, and during the rehearsals for that, we I started in uh, working with the guys, and, and uh, John Keane was producing that record. And when it came time to record, um, I still wasn't satisfied with it, so uh, we didn't even do a demo um, of it, which I, I kind of regret not doing that uh, during the Athens sessions. But we didn't even do a demo, and then. But Matthew and I got together, and I had written, I don't know, 40, 50 songs, and we were going through this just arsenal of material, and then him and I wrote a few songs together. But we would start the sessions out uh, where we would just go into some random jam that, you know, you know, just to have fun. And he'd never heard that song. And I started playing it one day, and, you know, during our opening jam, and it was there, like exactly how I always wanted it to be. I played it at a different tempo and a different key. Matthew had never heard it, um, and I hadn't played it in years. And what you hear on the record is almost identical to how we played it um, the first time we played it together. Um, so uh, I'm glad I finally <laughs> got my hands around that song. <laughs> Sounds like third time is the charm for that song. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was. Well, I knew it could be really, really good, and I just, I, I, it just wasn't good, or it wasn't what it needed to be the way I was playing it. So, I, I wanted to, I, I wanted to get it right. I also watched the Cain and Abel video for the song "Get Off," and. It has quite a groove. I couldn't sit still when I watched and listened to it. Yeah. The video is also very good. Tell me how that came together. Um, well, Get Off was uh, uh, produced and directed by Freddie Palenia, uh, and he's he's done uh, uh, lots and lots of, of videos. Um, it was just by chance that I, I, I met him. He actually heard the song through a, a, a friend of mine um, in his car, and he was like, what is that song? I'm going to do a video for that. Uh, and we actually, uh, I wanted to do a performance video uh, first, and we re recorded that at the power station uh, where we recorded um, the, uh, the two Cain and Abel records. And when we were recording, um, I I won't do the lip sync thing. Um, you know, I, I know a lot of people do that when they make videos, but I, I just I can't do it. Um, so we played the song to the tempo, but what you're seeing in the video is uh, we're playing live. We're playing to the we're playing the same tempo. We had to do a lot of takes, and Freddie got really frustrated with us because you know we didn't want to um, uh, we didn't want to lip sync, but uh, I mean, I think that's one of the reasons why the you know the groove is there of the song, but we're 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 actually playing. And the only thing that I regret about that was we no one thought to turn on a couple of good microphones and record the session because the band was on fire that day. And I I heard the recordings on the camera from the camera mics, and I was like, oh my god, I can't believe we didn't get this. <laughs> but it was. <laughs> It, it was it was a lot of fun to to uh, uh, to, to do that video. Everybody had a, a, a really good a good time with it. Thomas, you're a self-taught guitarist with a gritty voice and an edgy sound. Who can we credit as your major music influences? That's that's one of those questions that I I I, I, I never know quite how to answer that because uh, if you you know, if, if you go into my my playlist on you know on iTunes, you'll 
you can hear anything from, you know, the Benny Goodman Orchestra to Erica Badu to uh, George Clinton uh, to, you know, there's just there's so much stuff on there. You know, there's there's Justin Timberlake and and uh, you know just t tons of, of of different artists. But then there's also like kind of a core group of artists that I think um, had like a really profound effect on me, like uh, Lou Reed and uh, Bob Dylan, uh, Mark Knopfler, like my favorite guitarist. Um, and you know there's there's a there's a lot more. Uh, Frank Zappa uh, actually um, had a um, has had a, a very profound effect on me. And if if you listen close to some of my recordings, you can hear a little Zappa attitude every once in a while. Uh, <laughs> uh, on the song on the song Get Off, the uh, if you if you listen to the line at the end, feel better now. Listen to that, and you'll hear a little Zappa attitude. <laughs> but um, I I think. Uh, I think to some degree, um, all the music um, that I've ever heard has had some kind of, of, of influence. How do you use social media to get the word out about your music and connect with bands? We're doing some, some things that are unique for the different uh, types of social media out there. Um, so you know, hopefully that continues to, to, to give us a, uh, a boost. So you're going to try to do something unusual and offer things that are only available on those platforms. Yeah, right, right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, to give give the people that that, that go to those um, those platforms um, and those that use that type of social media, um, you know, just make it uh, uh, so they have a reason to do that. As you know. Amuse Now is about artists helping artists. So what advice do you have for other indie musicians who are trying to make a name for themselves? Well, I think that the first thing um, a, a, an artist uh, or someone who wants to make a name for themselves in music needs to ask themselves and ask themselves seriously is, what are you doing it for? You know why? You know what? What's your what's your ultimate goal? And if your ultimate goal is to, you know, become rich and famous, I think maybe you should go do something else. Um, because it's about if you're a musician, it's about the music. It's about being an artist. Um, uh, but and I, and I think there's actually a lot. There's way too many people right now that that. Are the reason that they're doing it is because they want to get well known. Um, but for the person that actually uh, they know they know they're an artist, you you can't run away from it. Um, it will find you if you try. <laughs> and I, I think that uh, you need to listen to your own intuition. Uh, and when uh, you get told no, and you um, you know, we'll get told no um, over and over and over again. You have to remember that um, you know the recording industry doesn't exactly have the best re um, uh, record in in choosing um, uh, who is is going to go over well and who who isn't. You know, Elton John was was uh, refused by most of the labels, and and of course. Jay Z was refu refused by everybody, and so he ended up starting his own. Um, but of course, there's the, mo the most most famous example is the uh, that A and R rep from Decca Records who uh, told the, the Beatles that they had no future in show business. Um, <laughs> <it's> like, <laughs> so I, I think that you know when when you get a door slammed in your face. Um, don't uh, uh, take that as as anything other than you know reason to kick down the next door you come to. That's all. You don't don't listen to uh, uh, people that are you know 
being negative. And like what you guys are doing, you're, you're you know, amused is, is, is positive, which is great. Um, but I, I really think uh, they just need to listen to their own tuition, intuition and their own, you know, the, their own heart and follow that. That's, that's my, my two cents anyway. <laughs> I hear that advice a lot. So you're not the only musician who feels that way. <laughs> What's up next for J. Thomas Edward? Well, this year, I, I hope to get it done uh, last year, but this year I am uh, think I'm hopefully going to get the song Carnival um, that's about the Carnival celebrations that are all, all over the world. I had to get that re-recorded and do it in multiple languages, in, in English, uh, Spanish, Portuguese, and French. And I hope to get it out. Um, the idea is to get it ready for, for February 2016. Um, so that's going to be a little bit of a challenge because I don't speak any of those languages except for English <laughs> and a little bit of Spanish. But uh, but I'm working on it. I got I got some I've got some uh, some help from some really good people and and we're going to see how how that comes off. I'm going to do uh, uh, more videos. I'm recording um, uh, demos right now. Uh, for a new uh, album, going to do some more uh, some more videos, so it's going to be a bit busy year, and I, I hope to get out and start do, doing some more touring in uh, the summer um, of uh, of this year. So busy. Well, Thomas, I had a fabulous time getting to know you this evening. Me too. It was good. It was good. Good, good to good to talk to you. I wish you a wonderful 2015, and I hope that all your plans come out just fantastic. And I will talk to you soon. Keep in touch, and let me know if you're in the Pacific Northwest, specifically I, Portland. I will. I will do that. And we're going to do. We're going to do one thing when I get. I get a couple of the guys are around here. We're going to record you a, a special version of Wounded in Love, an acoustic version. I'm going to send it to you. It's just for you. Just for your own private. <laughs> Awesome! <laughs> okay, but it was very good to talk to you. Good night. Good night. Hi, I'm Cynthia Kahn, founder of Amuse Now. This featured artist presentation has been brought to you by Amuse Now Entertainment, a website that enables artists to profit from their creativity. To learn more about Amuse Now, Visit us at www.amusednow.com or email me at ccon at amusednow.com.